One thing I hated was to be written off as an abstract person, you know, a person who does nothing with proof theorems and all that. You know, I, I hated that as a move. And I wanted, if I develop a theorem, I want to get down to the bottom of lucid, and, uh, you know, to, you know, otherwise it doesn't mean anything. So I classify mathematics, every kind of mathematics as applied. There's no theorem that you develop that is not based on the motivation of application. And of course, in the process, I've run into arguments with uh, people like uh, uh, Peter Jones uh, of Yale. And eventually, we agreed with uh, those of uh, Tonenberg. Um, I, math has been my life. And as I said, because of the application, interest that I have, I have worked in physics, mathematical physics specifically. And it would go further beyond you know, the physics formulation to aerodynamics, aircraft wings. In the one in my theorem, when the formula was developed, I looked at it. First thing was to try to recover it. Known uh, principles, uh, Einstein theorems, uh, uh, Maxwell's, uh, and Newton's. And it seems that the conclusion would have presented a background which was uh, uses not familiar. The theory that is supposed to unify forces, four known the search has been going on as many people know. Newton, Galileo, Maxwell, uh, with quite a few highlights. Um, and Einstein and Lorenz, you know, created the geometry and the theorem of the special relativity through the study of transformations. Well, I present our finding in those terms, a theorem that says, the theory of everything can be expressed by that formula. In other words, you have a universe that is made of a unified field. In that field, matter is represented by high concentration of the field. So, if you visualize components of that overall field, you could have what you might call a time component, a net and a space component. And because when God created the universe, we're told that was done in seven days. And to, they were totally reported again that God actually uh, went back again to continue the creation. So it means that you have a totality that was fixed at that particular point in time. And so if there were changes, it would be a matter of transformation. They will transform from one form to another. Uh, there won't be any new addition to the system. So that basically is the expression of that formula. What I will find out later on is that that's a mathematical entity that can describe any equation that has ever been studied in mathematics. You could adjust any equation, even algebraic equations, with that equation. As long as they're broad, it does functions of. As long as you have a reference coordinate system, 
you can use these linear transformations to tell what is going on in the other coordinate system. So you don't have to work from the uh, reference coordinate per se. So of course Einstein would then come out to say that if inertial coordinate systems have no accelerations, what happens if you go to a non inertial coordinate system where there will be acceleration? He then theorized that the metal tensors that make these connections possible would indeed be the ingredients that make up the field theory for acceleration for gravitation. That was another another thing that, that blew me away. How could somebody just I mean <laughs> You transform, you do a transformation, and you have, uh, you know, some invariants and so on and so on. And you just can figure that the metric tensors actually are responsible for the field. And make a note of that. Well, I present our finding in those terms a theorem that says. The theory of everything can be expressed by that formula. In other words, you have a universe that is made of a unified field. In that field, matter is represented by high concentration of the field. So, if you visualize components of that overall field, you could have what you might call a time component and that at the space component. And because when God created the universe, we're told that was done in seven days. And to, they were told reported again that God actually uh, went back again to continue the creation. So it means that you have a totality that was fixed at that particular point in time. And so if there were changes, it would be a matter of transformation. They would transform from one form to another. Uh, there won't be any new addition to the system. So that basically is the expression of that formula. What I will find out later on is that that's a mathematical entity that can describe any equation that has ever been studied in mathematics. You could adjust any equation, even algebraic equations, with that equation. As long as they're broad, they're just functions of t, x, y, z. What Einstein was talking about, that he liked to see a theorem that was basically dependent on space and time, which is physical material. So then, eventually, I will come across, through an independent approach, something we call ethos of N, which uh, most physicists will recognize as resembling the proper time or space-time variable. Indeed, that's what it is, except it is generalized. Space-time variable, as was known and uh, uh, given by Professor Einstein, had n equal one. Okay? And the uh, g's you can adjust accordingly. But this goes beyond that. In any case, it's still space-time. Right. It turned out that that is a parameter or a characteristic function, if you will, the mathematical equivalent of a cell in biology with which you can construct any system, any physical system that exists. So that's the theorem. So uh, 
if it makes sense, as I said, if the, the glory of the Almighty God was meant to be seen, I should be able to find a generalized uh, unified field force that can be separated into a gravity, electromagnetic, strong force, weak force, and even others that may not have been determined yet. So I prayed hard and I look forward to getting that.